The urgent challenge to protect our common home includes a concern to bring the whole human family together to seek a sustainable and integral development for we know that things can change. The Creator does not abandon us. He never forsakes His loving plan or repents having created us. Humanity still has the ability to work together in building our common home. Here I want to recognize and encourage and thank all of those striving in countless ways to guarantee the protection of the home we share. Particular appreciation is owed towards, to those who tirelessly seek to resolve the tragic effects of the environmental degradation on the lives of the world's poorest. Young people demand change. They wonder how anyone can claim to be building a better future without thinking of the environmental crisis and the sufferings, the sufferings of the excluded. I urgently appeal then for a new dialogue about how we are shaping the future of our planet. We need a conversation, which includes everyone, since the environmental challenge we are undergoing is, and its human roots concern and infect us all. The worldwide ecological movement has already made considerable progress and led to the establishment of numerous organizations committed to raising awareness of these challenges. Regrettably, many efforts seek to concentrate solutions to the environmental crisis have proved ineffective, not only because of the powerful opposition, but because of a more general lack of interest. Obstructionist attitudes, even on the part of believers, can range from denial of the problem to indifference, nonchalant resignation, or blind confidence in technical solutions. All of us can cooperate as instruments of God for the care of creation each according to his or her own culture, experiment, experience, involvements, and talents. Yeah. And I, thank you, Bishop Singh. Thank you, Mary. Let me take a quick moment to give a shout out to mothers out front. <laughs> and to all the organizers of today's event. piece from this encyclical toward a new lifestyle. The current global situation engenders a feeling of instability and uncertainty, which in turn becomes a seedbed for collective selfishness. When people become self-centered and self-enclosed, their greed increases. The emptier a person's heart is, the more he or she needs things to buy, own, and consume. It becomes almost impossible to accept the limits imposed by reality. In this horizon, a genuine sense of common good also disappears. As these attitudes become more widespread, Social norms are respected only to the extent that they do not clash with personal needs. So our concern cannot be limited merely to the threat of extreme weather events, but must also extend to the catastrophic consequences of social unrest. Obsession with consumerist lifestyle Above all, when people, when few people are capable of maintaining it, can only lead to violence and mutual destruction. Yet, all is not lost. Human beings, while capable of the worst, are also capable of rising above themselves, choosing again what is good, and making a new start despite their mental and social conditioning. We are able to take an honest look at ourselves, to acknowledge our deep dissatisfaction, and to embark on new paths to authentic freedom. No system can completely suppress our openness to what is good, true, and beautiful or our God-given ability to respond to His grace at work deep in our hearts. 
I appeal to everyone throughout the world not to forget this dignity which is ours. No one has the right to take it from us. A change in lifestyle could bring healthy pressure to bear on those who wield political, economic, and social power. This is what consumer movements accomplish by boycotting certain products. They prove successful in changing the way businesses operate, forcing them to consider their environmental footprint and their patterns of production. When social pressure affects their earnings, businesses clearly have to find ways to produce differently. This shows us the great need for a sense of social responsibility on the part of consumers. Purchasing is always a moral and not, simple or not simply economic act. Today, in a word, this issue of environmental degradation challenges us to examine our lifestyle. The Earth Charter asked us to leave behind a period of self-destruction and make a new start, but we have not as yet developed a universal awareness needed to achieve this. Here I would echo that courageous challenge as never before in history common destiny beckons us to seek a new beginning. Let ours be a time remembered for awakening, for the awakening of a new reverence for life. The firm resolve to achieve sustainability, the quickening of the struggle for justice and peace, and the joyful celebration of life. We are always capable of going out of ourselves towards the other. Unless we do this, other creatures will not be recognized for their true worth. We are unconcerned about caring for things for the sake of others. We fail to set limits on ourselves in order to avoid the suffering of others or the deterioration of our surroundings. Disinterested concern for others and the rejection of every form of self-centeredness and self-absorption are essential if we truly wish to care for our brothers and sisters and for the natural environment. These attitudes also attune us to the moral imperative of assessing the impact of our every action and personal decision on the world around us. If we can overcome individualism, we will truly be able to develop a different lifestyle and bring about significant changes in our society. I'm the priest at Christ Church, Episcopal on East Avenue. I want to quote to you from someone who was shot for speaking truth to power. We hope and pray this will not happen to the Pope. I quote to you from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And one day we must ask the question, why are there 40 million poor people in America? When you ask that question, you begin to question the capitalistic economy. And I'm simply saying that more and more we've got to begin to ask questions about the whole society. We're called upon to help the discouraged beggars in life's marketplace. But one day we must come to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring. It means that questions must be raised. You see, my friends, when you deal with this, you begin to ask the question, who owns the oil? You begin to ask the question, who owns the iron ore? You begin to ask the question, why is it that people have to pay water bills in a world that is two-thirds water? My prayer, may God help us, may God help us to question our capitalistic economy, to ask not only why were there 40 million people in America in 1965 who were poor, but to ask why are so many millions more today. And God help us not only to ask who owns the oil, but to ask also how can we stop depleting it and stop
stop destroying ourselves and all of creation with it. And finally, God help us not only to ask, why must people pay water bills in a world that is two-thirds water? But to ask also, what will we do now that we have rendered the most essential element of life all but unable to sustain us? God help us. God help us. Final excerpt that will be read by Alex White, candidate for city council. Hi everybody. With regard to climate change, the advances have been relative, regrettably few. Reducing greenhouse gases requires honesty, courage, and responsibility. Above all, on the part of the countries which are the most powerful and pollute the most. The Conference of the United Nations on Sustainable Development, Rio Plus 20, from Rio 2012, issued a wide-ranging but ineffective outcome document. International negotiations cannot make significant progress due to the position taken by countries which place their national interests above the global common good. Those who will have to suffer the consequences of what we are trying to hide will not forget this failure of conscience and responsibility. Even as this encyclical was being prepared, the debate, the debate was intensifying. We believers cannot fail to ask God for a positive outcome to the present discussions, so the future generations will not have to suffer the effects of our ill-advised delays.